Hey guys, this is JJ with Express Workshops. This week we're going to swap out the sky using the blend if mode inside of Photoshop. Okay, let's get started on using the blend if command inside of Photoshop. The first thing you might ask me is what the heck is a blend if inside of Photoshop? Let me show you. First, before we get started, I have to do this. You have to make sure that your background layer is unlocked or you will not get the um, actual option to come up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you go to up here to layer, and then you go down, you don't have the layer option that you need highlighted. So what you have to do first is go over to your background layer. And the way that I unlock it is I hold Alt on the keyboard and click on the little lock. Now that gives me a layer. So now I can do what I need to do. But you can access it now by going up to layer and then just go to layer style and then clicking blend options. Okay. And then this dialog box will come up and I'm going to show you how this works uh, first and then I'll go ahead and apply it and use it a couple different ways. Um, first thing that you have to understand is that you just need the blending options selected up here. You don't need any of these other ones, you're not going to get the same box here. You're not going to be able to see this box if you have drop shadow or inner glow or outer sh whatever you've got there. It's just not going to show up. So make sure first that you've got the blending options set here. So that's selected. You're going to see this area right down here. This is the blend if section. And what you're going to see is two different sliders. You're going to see a slider for this layer and you're going to see a slider for underlying layer. In this tutorial, we're going to use the this layer and I'll show you how it works um, as we go along. But first I want to say that this basically the blend if option changes uh, based on where, where, where in the color range you're looking for. So if I'm looking to change something in the shadows then I'm going to be messing with the left hand slider. If I'm going to do something with the highlights, I'm going to be using the right hand slider. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. All right. So what I want to do is I want to modify this photograph that I took from uh, uh, inside a cruise ship looking out on uh, onto the sky here. Uh, what I want to do is change the sky here to a different sky. So. Um, Really, when I use the blend if, I don't always use it as a, you know, a final thing that I'm doing because there's some things that the blend if will do for you and some things it won't. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about as we do this. But first, I need to go ahead and get um, another photograph here. So I'm going to go to this other file and I want to get it over to my Windows. Uh, file. So I'm just going to click on it, drag it there, and now I'm still holding on the, the left mouse and I'm going to hold shift and then let go and it will center it inside of that file. Now since I have made this bottom layer a uh, an, an object and or a layer instead of a background layer, then I can pull this top layer below it. If you're having problems doing that, then make sure that you have made that um, background layer just a regular layer. All right, so what we're looking at now is just the top photograph with the sky showing through. So what I have to do now, I did go up here before to layer and then go down to layer style and over. Well, there's a shortcut that you can use. I can just double click on this layer and it's going to bring up the same dialog box. So I like to do things, you know, as quickly as I can when I do them. All right. So this is what we need to concentrate on. Remember I said we we're going to work on just the, this layer. So we're going to mess with the highlights. So this light area over here where the sky is. And if I take this slider and I slide it to the left, you can see it basically gets rid of all that blue. And that's really what I wanted to do from the beginning. 
Okay. Now there's one other thing that I want to do before I do that, just so that I can show you what happens sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. All right. Um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and duplicate this top layer and I'll show you why I'm going to do that in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and go with control J and I copied that and I'm just going to turn the eyeball off. Now let's go ahead and go back in again. I'm going to double click on this layer. I'm back in and now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. One thing that I want to show you is as I move this slider over, you can see that this right here is a real sharp line from where it's actually taking the uh, blending the colors and where it's not blending the colors. Um, one of the things that's hidden on this little slider is that these sliders are actually broken up into two pieces. There's nothing that tells you that, you just have to know it. Um, and what you have to do to separate them is hold Alt on your keyboard and click on one side and pull it apart. And you see what that does. Now it makes that transition much more smooth um, than it was before. So if you run into a situation where you need a smooth transition, then you know that you can just click Alt and then just drag that wherever you need to. And that works. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and move them together because it won't make a difference for me. Okay, so you take a look at that. That looks pretty good. And again, it's one of those things where like areas like this where they're kind of, oh, you know, starting to bleed through. I can go back and maybe pull that just back a little bit like that. And that's good. That's, that's kind of a good blend. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And then you can see this area right here. This is what I was talking about. It'll kind of give you some funky results sometimes where, you know, you've got part of what you don't want there um, already showing up weird. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to my top layer. I'm going to turn this uh, eyeball back on and I'm going to select that layer and then I'm just going to use a masking tool here. And I'm going to go around this area just where I want to make sure that it's this layer is not being affected. And I'll go there. And again, while I'm doing this, I'll use this a lot for just doing comps um, and just to see quickly if something is going to work for me like I want to. Um, and then I might go back in and clean it up if I have a problem with it later. So now I've got this selected here. And what I want to do is I want to be able to keep the part that's inside of this uh, selection and then drop off this part into uh, the layers underneath. So what I can do is I can just go down here and select the add layer mask. When I click that, then it drops out that part of it. It creates a mask over here, drops that part out and keeps this part original. Okay. So that's one way of, of, of using it. Now, another way that I use it probably more often than that is, uh, let's say that I've got a logo like this one I just happen to have. And I want to be able to bring this onto um, another layout, but I don't want this white area here to show up. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click this and go in and bring it, well, not on that one. I'll bring it on this one. All right, just like that. And as you can see, I've got this big white square around it, and I really don't want that. So a lot of times, let me size this first. I'll size it down. All right. So a lot of times you would think, well, you know, it's on its own layer. Let's just go to the blend options here and go to multiply. Well, that took out the white, but you can also see that it made the colors duller. It, it blends the color also with the background. And I don't really want that. What I want to be able to do is keep that saturation of that purple. I just want to lose the white. So let's go back, change that back to normal. And this time, let's go ahead and do the blend if again. So I'll double click on that layer, bring up the options, and this is the highlight in. So I'll grab that and bring that over about like that and say OK. And as you can see, now it dropped out that color, the white, but it did leave the saturation of 
the purple in there like I want it. Now, the only problem with this is that you would think, okay, well, great. You know, if I wanted to put some effects or whatever on there, then all I have to do is highlight that layer and click effects and go down and put, for instance, a stroke around it. All right, let's go ahead and make this white so we can see it here. And as you can see what's going on, it's not stroking the logo part of it, it's just stroking the square that is actually still there. Now there is a workaround and I, I do this sometimes. Um, what I wanna do is I'll go ahead and select the layer that I'm on here and I'm gonna go in and make a new layer, just a blank layer. And this is important, I need to make that blank layer below my logo. And then I will go and shift click both of those. I'll right click and I'll say merge layers. So now this is no longer blended even though it looks like it is using the blend if. And what that allows me to do now is to go back in and I'll use that stroke that I was doing. I'll make that white. Say okay, and as you can see, it's actually doing what I wanted it to do, which is go ahead and put the stroke around it. Okay. All right, that is my tutorial for the week. Um, please subscribe and uh, so that you'll know that whenever my new videos come out every week, and also hit the uh, thumbs up button down there. And if you have a question, of course, just leave a uh, a question in the comment section. And uh, thanks again for watching my video and I'll see you again next week.